good morning students good morning to all yesterday we have studied something about the facts and the theories of economics and the nature of economic laws and some of the subdivisions of economics the consumption production distributions and exchange have you remember anything okay now we will study something about yesterday what we have studied okay so yesterday we have studied some of the economic facts and the theories and the features and the facts and the theories normally using the different methods the economists observe facts such as change in the supply or price of a commodity and similarly the quantity demanded of that commodity also varies okay so whenever we want to go to study it, some of the facts also will be there on the basis of facts only we can make as a theories or a laws okay for example if you want to make a law of demand so we have to analyze many facts related to the law okay for example the change in the prices of a commodity the quantity demanded of that commodities will be vary okay so the price of the commodities whenever the price of the commodity is increasing so the quantity demanded will be increase or decrease okay but it will be varies okay in which basis it will be varies some of the fact have to be collect okay so on the basis of human behavior as the rational consumers on the basis of the activity of rational consumers only we can collect it or we can consider okay so normally the price of that commodity is increased what will happen so normal people will not get some of the satisfaction okay normally if we want to consuming any of the commodities we will be ready to spend some amount of the money okay so on this by spending some amount of the money we must get some amount of the or equal amount of the satisfaction on that commodities okay suppose if you are not getting the reasonable satisfaction we won't ready to spend more money okay then some of the reason one of the reason is the people will not get the satisfaction to increasing the price of commodities and when they consuming that commodities okay so only the price of that commodities will be increase uh, sorry the price of the demand of the commodity will be decrease quantity demand of the commodities will be decrease because when they are when they are spending some amount of the money they won't get is the equal or the reasonable satisfaction okay this is the fact okay so on the basis of the fact only so the economist will be creating the laws different type of the laws okay, so whenever they want to make or create one of the laws the laws must be have some of the facts and truth so not only that so the economist test his theory by collecting further facts and when his theory stands the test of time and obtains universal acceptance okay so what are the facts collected facts are put into the analysis and the results of analysis is acceptable by the universally so the facts are this collecting data will become as a law of universe okay so the facts so on the basis of some of the facts if some of the truth is acceptable by the throughout the world so that fact may become as a law okay so different type of the facts and the theories also existing to analyze next is the nature of economic laws so a law express a causal relationship between two or more than two phenomena okay already we have studied you know more phenomenon means so the two in the basis of law demand suppose if you are taking the law of demand the two phenomenon will be happen what phenomenon so the price of that commodity is increasing that is the one phenomenon 
so next so the quantity demanded is decreasing this is also one of the phenomenon okay some of the other reason is also there so we can consider some of the reason is as a phenomenon okay so the all the phenomenon will be have some of the differentiations between two reasons two causes are the two phenomena okay so the law only express the causal relationship between the two or more phenomena okay why the two phenomena will be occurs on which basis okay this expressed by the law so not only that marshall also states the economics laws are statements of tendency statements of tendencies mean okay so many of the economist will express their results of analysis okay some of the economist will consider the economics as a science and some of the economist will consider the economics as a arts like that different type of the economist will express their or expose their attitude or their ideas okay so we cannot accept the laws of economics as a accurately okay so we can consider the laws of economics as a approximately but we can't accept it as a accurate one and not only that we have studied in natural sciences a definite result is expected to follow from a particular cause okay some this other sciences we can expect or we can expect some of the approximate result or accurate result okay for example in this newton law of newton there is no change okay but in the law of demand some of the exceptions are there okay so with this exceptions only the law of demand will be accept the law of demand the what are the what is the exceptions of law of demand I mean other things being equal okay so the test of preference and the consumer um, price of commodities income of the uh, consumers will be changed and other things being equal only the law of demand will be acceptable otherwise it is not acceptable okay but in this uh, nature of science so the law of newton it is not like that suppose if you are thrown out of the thrown up in of the stone to the sky it will come back to the earth as definitely okay so without any struggle this is not approximately it is a accurate one and not only that some of the facts will be controlled and experimented in his laboratory okay so we can easily test the data collected in this science okay by using this data by using this some of the experiments we can bringing out some of the definite results okay but in economics not like that we cannot test any of the experiment and we can't observe it so we cannot expect some of the accurate result and next we have studied the economics its subdivisions okay so with those the subdivisions the economics will not get fulfilled okay so one of the subdivisions of economics is consumption already we have studied the human wants coming under the consumption and the human wants is the starting point of economic activity so if there is no human wants there is no need to producing any commodities okay so why the producers want to producing commodities he has taking effort to satisfying the human wants okay but he will earning some amount of the money as a profit but even though the consumption only is the starting point okay if there is no consumption there is no need to producing commodities and the commercial activities also the exchange of goods and services only for the purpose of satisfying the human wants okay so if there is no human wants the consumption the human wants mean the consumption okay so the can want to consuming any of the commodity is called as a consumption okay but if there is no consumption there is no need to producing or production of commodities and there is no exchange of goods and services from one place to another place okay so we can consider the consumption or the human wants only is the starting point of all the economic activity and the commercial activity also okay 
so many of the goods and services are moving from one place of the producer to place of the consumers why so the consumption so the producers and the channel of distributors also have to take in uh, they will ready to taking some of the effort to satisfying the consumer wants okay next production so production is the process of transformation of inputs into output okay so the process of transformation of inputs into output so the producers only will be taking some of the process of transformations of inputs to output he will be arranging some of the inputs as a raw materials to finishing product as a output okay so who is taking the effort who is taking the process of transformation of inputs into the output is called production the producers only will have the effort and chance and possibility to producing the commodities by using the raw materials what he has into the output what the consumers wants and not only that so this division covers the characteristics and role of the factor of production okay for the purpose of producing any of the commodity so the producers have to arrange the factor of production as a proper way okay so all the factor of production the land labor capital organizations the all factor of production have to perform their role as very well okay so for that the producers only have to arranging the factor of production so and the factor of the role of factor of production also will be covered in the phase of production only okay next exchange the exchange is concerned with the price determination in different market forms so we have studied the we will study the different market forms okay so the duopoly market perfect market conditions imperfect market conditions like that so the different market forms are there okay but in this different market how the goods are exchanged from one place to another place is exposed and studied by the exchange in the phase of exchange so this divisions of exchange only covers the trade and commerce okay how the products are moving one places to another one of the places and what are the factors also come under the divisions of exchange so the consumption is possible only if the produced commodity is placed into the hands of consumers okay so for that the exchange is very much need okay the some of the business or the commercial activity have to undertaken by the traders and the producers okay so how the produce is moving from one place to another place is expressed or explained by the divisions of exchange next distribution so the production is the result of the coordination of factor of production okay so the coordination of factor of production means so when the producers arrange the factor of production to produce any of the commodities he has to arrange as the equal ratio or the reasonable ratio okay sometimes so for example the two factor of production if you are taking the two factor of production the land resources so the capital or the labor so capital mean we can consider the machineries okay for the purpose of producing any of the commodities so one producers can arrange the two unit of machineries and the two unit of labor otherwise one unit of machinery and the three units of labor otherwise three units of machinery and one unit of labor okay so by using the factor of production so the producer will be bringing out the productions okay so we can consider the coordination of the factor of production only is called as a product okay next distribution studies about the pricing of factor of productions okay so we are producing any of the commodities by using the factor of productions okay so that the factor of productions also have to get the reasonable remunerations in the form of their wage rent and profit and interest okay so how the factor of productions are going to get the remunerations will be studied by the divisions of distributions right and now yesterday also we have studied some of the economics and their types of economics and yesterday we have studied the micro and the macro economics only right so micro economics mean what so it is the study of economic actions of individual units 
into the limits main household and farms and industries okay so we will study about the individual units how the economic actions of individual units the household and farms and industries and it studies how business firm operates under different market conditions okay so different type of the business firms are there then it studies the how business firms operate under different market conditions already we studied you know so the monopoly market duopoly market oligopoly market the fight the competition market okay this different type of market how the business operations how business uh, business firms will be operate is studied by the microeconomics okay and next the how the market condition how the market how the uh, sorry how the combined actions of buyer and seller determine the prices okay normally the prices will be determined by the demand and supply demand demand supply means to the buyer and seller the buyer and seller only will be determined the price okay so the pricing determination is explained in the microeconomics only next macroeconomics so macroeconomics is the absorbs of microeconomics so micro means the small and macro means large okay when we are studying the individual unit so we can consider it is the microeconomics okay so when we are going to study the whole economy so we can consider that is the macro economics so in this macro economy so we will study about the aggregate demand and the national income output and the employment opportunity and the unemployment problem and the monetary policies fiscal policies tax policies everything will be explained by the macro economics only another another one of the economics is there international economics so in the modern world no country can grow in isolation okay so in now in this modern world if you are taking any of the nations so it will never will growing without depending on other nations okay so all the nations have to depending on another other nations or another nations for their domestic need okay because all the nations will have different type of the natural resources by using this natural resources any one nations will be have more productivity to producing in enough the particular line okay another nations also will have more productivity power to producing okay so and uh, some of the nations will have never possible to do producing some type of commodities okay in that time so that nations must be depending upon the another nations okay and not only that every nations will be in the need of having the foreign exchange okay so how can we get the foreign exchange mean so by involving the international trade only we will get the foreign exchange right so the international economics always explain how one nations are depending on other nations or what is the relationship between among the nations this is exposed by the international economics so in this international economics we will study about the internal and the external affairs and the foreign direct investment how the foreign direct investment will be moving from one country to another one of the nations and what are the international monetary associations are there and what are the accelerators of international economics are there everything will be studied in this divisions only next public economics so public finance is concerned with the income or revenue rising and expenditure incurring activities of the public authorities okay so public economics means so the government how to earning money and in which form so the government have to provide the welfare activity to the public okay so public economics always deals with how the governments are providing the public welfare to the public and how can we earning more money or earning profit from the infrastructure facilities and what are the policies are there to increasing the economic development whenever they can able to made the proper monetary or fiscal policies everything will be under the divisions of public economics next is development economics so in this economics always explain the countries have been class classification of the 
countries. Okay, the countries always classified on the basis of their national income or the GDP. Okay, so we can classify the nations on their uh, development as a uh, development economy, developed economics, developed nations, or underdeveloped nations, or developing nations. Okay, so these classifications always will be classified by their national income and their GDP rate. Not only that, some of the growth of developments are there. Okay, suppose if any of the nations are growing only in their national income, it is called as a growth. Okay, but if you want to say one of the nations are developed means, so the nation must be have some of the increased GDP and the high national income along with the human welfare that is the higher income of people, the purchasing power of the people and the high standard of living of the people and the some of the index. So the happiness index and the some of the income development index, everything have to be increased and have to be as a higher growth. Then only we can consider the nation is as a development nations. Okay, so the developmental economics expanded economic developmental economics deals with the about deals with the category of the nations. Next health economics. So health economics is an area of applied economics. Applied economics means it covers health indicators, preventive and curative measures and medical research and education, rural health mission, drug and the price controls. Okay, so how one health facilities will be improved and what are the ways are the ways are there to increasing the health and hygienic of the peoples in our nations is exposed by the health economics. Okay, and not only that they have to making their uh, differentiation between the rural and urban areas okay so what are the possibilities are there there to arranging the high health for their public in this rural area and the vice versa next environmental economics so the depletion of natural resources stock and pollution result from rapid economic development okay so whenever the economic is growing and the developing so in the same time our environment also will be affected by many causes okay so we must or the society or the nations only have to take some of the reasonable effect to recovering the environment or the pollution polluting environment okay so the environmental studies about how to recovering the hazards of environment or how to protect the environment or how to stop the hazards of the environment so the environmental economics studied about the relationship between the environment and the development of economics okay so the environmental economics is a study of interdisciplinary tools for the problems of ecology economy and environment so whenever the economic is developing that time so the ecology will be affect and the environment also will be affect okay so whenever the economy is growing improving in growing continuously at the steady so the nation must be taking care of the environment and the ecology also okay so we have studied the different types of economics microeconomics macroeconomics international economics public economics, developmental economics, health economics and environmental economics and some more types of economics also will be there in our subject but now it is no need we will study later okay but we have to know some extra things between the microeconomics and the macroeconomics because so in this lesson we will study more about the micro and macro only okay so we must know about the distinction or the difference between microeconomics and the macroeconomics only so we will study about the difference of micro and macroeconomics first we will study the meaning of microeconomics 
So microeconomics is the branch of economics which deals with the economic decision making of individual economic agents such as the producer and the consumer etc. The producer and the consumers mean so we have studied you know how the price is determined on the different type of the market only by the producer and the consumer or the demand and supply only. Okay, but in macroeconomics, it is the branch of economics which deals with aggregate and average of entire economy. Entire economy means how entire economy is growing that every year. Okay, so the aggregate output, national income, aggregate savings and investment. Okay, so by having the aggregate savings and investment only, so we can bringing out the more output and we can increase in the national income. So next so the microeconomics takes into account of small components of the whole economy. Small components of mean, so we have studied, you know, so the single, yeah, the individual unit, such as uh, household, firms or the small industry. Okay. But the microeconomics takes into the consideration on the economy of a country as a whole. Okay. So what are the factors? What are the units are there in our whole economy? Everything will be studied under the macroeconomics. So we will study the unemployment problem, poverty situations, national income, monetary policy, fiscal policy, tax policies, everything will be studied under the part of macroeconomics. Next, the microeconomics deals with the process of price determinations in case of individual product and factor of productions. Okay, so how we can producing the commodities by using the factor of production and price determinations. Okay, so how the price will be determined on the basis of demand and supply only. Okay, so the microeconomics always deals with the process of price determinations and the individual products and factor of production. But the macroeconomics deals with general price level in any economy. General price level means so throughout the economy how the price level is going to maintain on the basis of employment problem, on the basis of tax policy, on the basis of monetary policies, on the basis of money supply. Okay, so on the basis of which factor we can maintaining the price level is yes, deal with macroeconomic. Next, so it is known as price theory. Okay, so microeconomics is also known as price theory. Price theory means so on the basis of price of that single commodity only we can understand the production or the factor of production. So only we will consider the microeconomics as a price theory. But macroeconomics also known as the income theory. Income theory means so on the basis of the national income only. So we can consider the whole economy as a developed, developing or underdeveloped in one of the category. So next, so the microeconomics concerned with the optimization goals of individual consumers and producers. Okay, so optimization of goals mean so the producers and the consumer must be having the satisfactions. Okay, so microeconomics concerned with the optimization of goals of individual consumers and producers. How the individual producers and the consumer will having the equilibrium situation is explained by the microeconomics. Next, the macroeconomics is concerned with the optimization of the growth process of entire economy. Okay, so this is also compared with the another nations. Okay, so the macroeconomics always focus on the GDP and the populations and the macro level aspects only. So the employment opportunity, poverty and the human development and the GDP like that only it will be focusing. So the macroeconomics concerned with the optimization of the growth process of entire economy. Okay, students. So I think it's enough. So today your study portion is just study the types of economics. Okay. And when you have the time, just study the differentiation between the micro and macro economics. Okay. Okay, student, if you have any doubt, please ask me. Thank you.